So we're gonna step into rules of inference and this is one of those rules that or this is one of a set of rules that you gotta know that you gotta memorize. So remember those laws that I told you, those laws of logic that I told you to memorize in one of my past videos? Well, now you have another set of rules to memorize and really uh, it's just that these two sets of rules that I'm making you memorize really make up the whole uh, well really makes up a whole big chunk of what you're gonna learn. So it's really good for you to memorize all these rules of inference that I'm gonna teach you. But I'm just gonna talk about it here and talk about it probably in the next couple of videos as well, so that you can really know what these rules of inference are. So the first rule of inference that I want to go through is modus ponens. And this is also known as the rule of detachment or method of affirming. Now the symbolic form of modus ponens is P and P implies Q. Uh, that, that statement implies Q. So what I have here is a truth table. So I would like you to, to fill this out. So pause video, fill this out. But I'm just going to go ahead and fill it out right now. So P implies Q. That's 1, 1. 0, 1, and P and P implies Q, that's 0, 0, 0, 1. And this last one, well, if we take uh, this P and P implies Q and implies Q, that will just give us all, that will just give us a tautology. <coughs> so that's all good. So really, what is modus ponens? So here's the rule in tabular form. P, uh, P, it's kind of like how we did addition in elementary school, kind of like that, except what we're really getting at the end is we're not getting a definite answer, well, we are getting a definite answer, but we're getting an inference, and not like how we do adding, where, where we get a summation, but we're getting an inference. So that's the kind of thing, thing modus exponents is. So let, without further ado, well, I have to give you this hint first. So you can see that this is pretty much P and then we have a P implies Q and then a horizontal line and then we have these three dots. I don't remember what these three dots are called but yeah they're just there for kicks uh, and then a the Q. So this Q is pretty much the conclusion. Uh, yeah in the case that Q is the conclusion for premises P and P plus P implies Q which appears in the horizontal line and without further ado let's go ahead and work out what it really means so the rule argues if P is true if P is true and if P implies Q is true then conclusion Q must be true now if if Q was false, if this was false, if this was false, then one of uh, P or P implies Q must, or both, one of them or both must be false. So here's a simple example that I want to go through, and since the Olympics just finished not too long ago, we're just going to use Phelps. So the first statement is Phelps win Olympic gold, so that would be our P. Now two, the second statement is if Phelps win Olympic gold, then Phelps will retire. So that's uh, implication and that is represented by P implies Q. So the first statement, Phelps win Olympic gold, that is P, which is already represented by the first statement. Then the second statement here, we have another uh, another thing to take care of and that's the, the, the validity of Phelps will retire and that would be represented by Q. So in the third statement, we found that Phelps retires. So that's really modus ponens in, in its essence. Really what we're getting is you're just pretty much canceling out these two P's and we're left with a Q. The statement P or Phelps win Olympic gold if Phelps win Olympic gold, then Phelps will retire. Well, we know that in the Olympics, Phelps did win Olympic gold, so uh, Phelps will retire. So that's why we got the inference that Phelps retires. Rules of inference. So that's as simple as I can explain it. Modus ponens is a tautology for primitive statements, but using the first substitution rule, we can replace compound statements uh, or replace compound statements, they will also be tautologies. So what I mean here is say that we have compound statements. Instead of P, we have compound statement R or S. 
and that's our first statement. Our second statement is R or S implies uh, negated T and U. Well, what we get here is we get, remember, these two cancel out. If P, this P and P, they're on the same side, and uh, yeah, so P, P and P are on the same side, and this P is, uh, is impl implying Q, then that's pretty much the same thing that's happening here. So we can say that therefore uh, negated T uh, and U, that is our conclusion, and that is a valid tautology. So that's all I want to go through in this video. Modus ponens isn't really that hard. Well, it's pretty much simple in its own sense because all you're doing is you're taking one statement and you're comparing with another statement and you will know if it's true or not and if you f and what depending on whether it's true or not, you'll get the validity, the tr the, the boolean value, the truth or false or of 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 the conclusion of Q. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of modus ponens, and it's really one of the most simplest laws of, or simplest rules of inference. Uh, we're going to go through some more rules of inference in the next couple of videos, so stick around. Please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys again next time.